Hey folks, this is Joshua and you're at the Great Bearded Green Beret. Just want to do a quick video on how to make char cloth. And I want to start by saying, you know, I normally don't make char cloth uh, unless I'm back here uh, before I actually go out. Char cloth is not something that I make in the field. Um, I don't carry an empty tin with nothing in it as well as some cotton material just so I can char it uh, when I get my first fire. If I'm going to carry a tin that I can use to make char cloth or make charred material in the field that I'm going to carry it full before I pack it to take out with me. So normally when I'm making char cloth, I'm making it back here in my garage or just outside of my garage. When I get into the field, I'm going to replenish that supply with natural materials that I can char that work just as well. Uh, they char pretty much the same and it's a replenishable material that I can use out in the field. So now what is char cloth? Char cloth is, uh, is a highly combustible material that accepts a spark, even a cool spark. You know, when I'm talking about hot spark versus cool spark, a ferrocerium rod, for example, would be a hot spark. That's around 5,500 degrees Fahrenheit, 3,000 degrees Celsius. Um, and when I'm talking about a cool spark, I'm talking about something from like a traditional flint and steel, uh, which is... Uh, around an 800 degree Fahrenheit spark. Uh, charred cloth and charred material, charred natural material, are sort of those, uh, a couple of those specialty tenders that you use with traditional flint and steel to accept that cool spark. So what do you need? You need a lighter, a heat source, some sort of tin to char in, and then some sort of cotton material to actually turn into char cloth. Some great things that you can use uh, to char are cotton balls, uh, cotton squares, linen, uh, cotton, denim that works especially well. Uh, any type of cotton, any type of natural fiber material you can use to make char cloth. Okay, so how do you make it? Well, we make it by taking cotton material or other natural material and we superheat the impurities out of it in an anaerobic environment. If you remember back to the fire triangle, you have heat, fuel, and air. What we do is we take away the air so that we don't have that complete triangle. Without the complete triangle, we won't have combustion. But what we're doing is we're superheating it, removing all the impurities, and turning it into a, a sheet of carbon that's ready to accept a spark. So, how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If you're using char cloth, this time I think I'll use uh, denim since I have a pair of old jeans that got tore up. I'm going to take 10 pieces of denim and I'm going to loosely put them inside this, this container. So this is the fuel. I don't want to pack these too tight because it'll kind of compress and it won't char as nicely. And for the tin, I'm using an, uh, a large can of tuna and I've done, I've used this probably, I don't know, uh, 100 times now and it's still going. Uh, I don't carry this with me into the field. I transfer that char cloth uh, into a smaller, more manageable size tin that I put into my belt kit. Uh, but anyway, when I opened this for the first time, I used one of those round edge kind of can openers so that it's not so sharp. And that makes for a tighter seal. When we're charring material, we're going to be pushing off impurities. And those are going to come out in the form of a gas. We're going to be pushing off nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, etc. And all of those are, are flammable uh, gases. So that needs a way to escape. And this tuna can doesn't fit together as well as it once did. And some of the other tins that you might find. Uh, really it comes down to can the gas escape? And if it can't, you need to poke a, a hole into the top. And you'll read everywhere that it needs to be the smallest little pinhole. Um, it's not been my experience. Uh, this is a rather large hole that I made with a nail. Um, and I've, I've actually had uh, containers that I've charred in that had several holes in it. So to me it's just a matter of getting the gas pushed out, a place to escape, and that's what I look for. That's what I go with. So I put those in there, I seal it up tight, turn on my pocket rocket, get that going. So now I'm superheating this in an anaerobic environment. So I've got my heat and I've got my fuel inside there, but there's no air. So what I'm looking for is I'm gonna start seeing smoke whipping up. And those are all moisture and impurities that are coming off of 
that. Still a little wet. That's moisture and impurities that are coming off of that char that uh, cotton material that I'm trying to char. And you can see that outside of that hole, I've got a lot coming around the rim as well. So that just goes to show you that it still works. And what I'm doing now is lighting my indicator light, what I call an indicator light. And I'm turning it down to conserve fuel. I just want that smoke to roll out of there. And if possible, I want to burn it off as it's coming off. Sometimes it won't light until you get the, the uh, moisture pushed out of it. And sometimes if your heat is too high, the gas is forcing out or coming out uh, too forcibly to actually light. But lighting it does a couple of things. One, it lets me know when the impurities are burned off. It lets me know when the impurities are burned off, and it keeps kind of reduces the amount of smoke that's coming off of it. So that indicator light is telling me that there's oxygen, there's nitrogen, there's hydrogen gas all still escaping from that. So this is kind of my canary, my canary flame. Uh, when that flame goes down, I know that I'm pretty close to being fully charred. And as you can see, that really reduces the amount of smoke that's coming out of my tin here, uh, which my garage is open and, and ventilated, which you should definitely do this in, an, in a well uh, ventilated area uh, for sure because these are pretty noxious gashes. But uh, my garage door is open. There's a breeze blowing through. It's all going out. Uh, so anyway, I still want to reduce that with the flame, and that flame tells me when we're getting close to being done. All right, so why charred material? Why use charred material? Well, for a number of reasons. If I have charred material, I don't have to use the flame from my lighter because this is a miniature ferro rod. And that flick and those sparks will be accepted by charred material and I can put that glowing ember that I created with that char cloth or that charred natural tinder, I can place that into a tinder bundle and blow it to flame. And I've conserved all of the fuel in here because I think we, we can all agree that you can find empty lighters on the trail, in the woods, uh, on the side of the road, anywhere you look you can find an empty lighter and it will be out of fuel when people throw it away. Well the, the little tiny ferrocerium rod in here still has a lot of strikes on it. So all I did with this one was take a zip tie and tighten it and put it up here to keep this from getting pressed in my pocket or in my kit so that I don't, lo so that I don't lose fuel but it also allows me to use just the ferrocerium rod on charred material. So conserving fuel for a lighter or using a broken lighter, you can use char cloth or charred natural tinder for that. Works really well. And you can see I'm starting to really reduce the amount of flame on my little canary light here. So a lot of times what happens is this starts compacting inside there and you have some charred and some uncharred uh, material in there so what I like to do is once that light goes out is I'll kind of pick it up and shake it a little bit without allowing it to open because if you open this that while it's superheated you reintroduce air into that fire triangle and it'll combust and you'll ruin your char cloth but if I keep that lid closed and I kind of agitate it a little bit I can separate that cloth and uh, make sure that anywhere that it was touching uh, itself tightly is kind of opened up and it'll char more evenly um, Another thing that I want to bring up is that, you know, how long do you cook this for? Well, you cook it until the canary light's done, then I'll shake it again, reheat it, and I'll check to see. So, but you cook it until all the gases have escaped. Um, can you burn charred material? Uh, not in my experience, you can't. I've, I've taken a tin and thrown it directly on a fire and forgot about it, and uh, you, once it pushes off those impurities, you're left with nothing but carbon. As long as air doesn't get introduced into that, as long as air doesn't get introduced back into that, you're going to have good charred material. You can't, you can't push out other impurities once they're gone. It's just carbon at that point. So I'm just going to agitate a little bit, making sure that the lid stays on. and make sure that I'm fully cooked here. 
So I'm watching up here to see if any white smoke starts coming out. Got a little bit of a canary light going, so I've still got some impurities that I opened up. I'm going to cook those off real quick. Pretty close to being done here. Agitate a little more. All right, you can see I've got just a little width of smoke coming off here. So I know that it's mostly done. Not enough to actually light. So that's a good indicator that this is complete. I'll push a little more heat to make sure. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. A little bit more, I'll let that go out the second time and then I'll call it good. I'll set it off to cool. But, um, okay, so conserving fuel under your lighter or using a broken lighter. Using a smaller ferrocerium rod, like this bushcraft necklace from Wazoo, doesn't take much for that char cloth to get going versus natural tinder that hasn't been charred. Uh, so, makes using something like this, a small ferro rod, you know, fine motor skills, makes that a lot easier, more forgiving. Uh, as far as solar, using a Fresnel lens or a uh, larger magnifier like this, works really well um, you can even with charred material use the lens on your Sunto your MC2 compasses uh, you can use that to light charred material if you're down to just this and you don't have another solar uh, ignition source so you can do that traditionally you know it's used with flint and steel you know which is a cool spark like I was telling you so traditionally it's used with that, and you can use it really well with that. Uh, but another thing that I like about charred material, and one of the reasons that I carry a carbon steel knife, uh, one of my favorites being the Mora Carbon Garberg, is that I can actually throw sparks off the spine of this with flint. So if I'm down to nothing, and all I have is my belt knife, and what's in my pockets. I can find natural stone that'll drive a spark off of the spine of this. And if I have a way to char natural to char natural material, then I can keep my fires going. Now, how would I get charred material if I have a knife and I don't have anything else? Well, glad you asked that. What I would do is I would use a bow drill. I would do a bow drill fire. I would use that fire to char material so that my next fire, I don't have to do a bow drill. I could take a piece of stone, the spine of my knife and that charred material, and I can get my fires going. That's much easier than doing a bow drill every single time. So that's the value of a carbon steel knife with natural stone when you have charred material. So I think this is done. I'm gonna let it cool. And once it's cool to the touch, then I'll open it up, and I always like to, before I transfer that into my tin and put it into my kit, I always like to do a few test pieces to make sure it was a good batch. Stick around. This is now cool to the touch, so I can go ahead and open it up and take a look at what we've got in here. Yeah, that looks good. So, what used to be, you know, 10 pieces of this blue denim with all these impurities is now this perfect black char cloth that's ready to accept a spark so let's test one I've got a tinder bundle right here we'll head outside and we'll take a shot at one of these okay so let's test out a piece of this char cloth and I'm going to use traditional flint and steel and what I like to do with traditional flint and steel is rather than have a flat piece of char cloth that's going to catch a spark I like to fold mine once and then fold it again and that kind of creates several edges that can catch a spark rather than just the very edge or the actual char cloth itself I like to have those kind of out kind of like fingers ready to catch that spark uh, just seems like I have more success that way so that's the way I like to do it I'll put that right on the edge of my stone 
and then if everything goes right and my edge geometry and the uh, the way that I'm holding this works it shouldn't take more than a couple of strikes to get that chart cloth going there we go once that's going because it's an ember I need to place that inside of a tinder bundle and blow it to flame Start off with long soft blows, that just warms up the tinder. Once it starts rolling out the back, I can blow a little harder. over so that it can feed and I'm done so that is a great batch of char cloth I'll transfer that over and put in my belt kit all right guys that is it for char cloth now remember char cloth is something that you make back in the rear put it in your kit carry that out with you there's no reason to take a good piece of cotton out in the field and use that for char cloth when you're surrounded by charable natural material. So the next video, I'll talk to you about making charred natural material in the field. So make sure you like, subscribe, make sure you click that notification bell to stay tuned. And uh, as always, thanks for everything you do for the Great Bearded Green Beret channel. Make sure you check out my new website at flintandsteel.net where you can get a schedule of all of my courses as well as all of the other instructors within the Flint and Steel Critical Skills Group Network. Until next time, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you out in the woods.